RE4, RO1A rebuild parts are normally an LS kit, filter, band, solenoid assembly, pump bushing. There's different uh, heights of pickup tubes, so make sure you've got the same one. There's different shapes of where the bolts go in the back here, so make sure it's all the same. Your uh, forward clutches, your low reverse, and your reverse clutches are different ones. Uh, these are different thicknesses, these two, which uh, I'm betting I got the wrong ones. Normally they send the wrong ones. These look like they're probably too thick. And then there's different teeth on the reverse clutches to make sure they're the same. And uh, I got two units in here at the same time. And they're quite a bit different. So we get to show you the differences between two of them. One's an Xterra and one's a uh, Frontier. Uh, the Xterra is a 2003. I don't remember what the year of the Frontier is. When the paperwork gets back here, I'll uh, let you know what year the Frontier is. Some things to go over here. There's a spot in the back of the case that take. There's three bolt holes. That's where this lines up. This is a blind hole. It does not take a bolt. Use a couple lineup pins just to line it up while I stick it in there. On the sun shell, if there's a bushing in here, take it out, throw it away. This overrun sprag, free wheel lock. This drum back here, when it's in the case, it'll free wheel clockwise, lock counterclockwise. On this hub here, see how this is just colored and not machined down like this side right here? This takes a double cage bearing like that. If it was smooth, machined up like that one, it would take that style of bearing back here. Now, there's two different heights also on here. Uh, let me in the ass one time. Make sure that you put the exact same height one back in. If you don't, one of them clutches is gonna ride up over the top of this. Actually, it's on this side. It'll ride up on the top here. When you shift into fourth gear, it's going to give you a squawking noise. Uh, the pins on the planets do like to walk out. Not a bad idea to run a tack weld right there and tack weld the back. My welder's broke, so it ain't getting done. Uh, on the servo, you can take one of the one of these springs out, usually the inner one, and leave it out if you want to. They say it burns the band. I never had a problem. I just stick them both back in there. Make sure you replace these two washers that come in the kit. Just break all the time. The pump washer likes to break quite a bit also. This bushing likes to wear out in the reverse drum. When you get your ceiling rings, Fit them on the drum, make sure they fit nice and tight. I've run into some situations with uh, a brand I won't mention names, and uh, they don't fit properly, and then you get a leak on the, on the circuit. Do the same thing to your high drum. Make sure that they're, uh, they're fitting in there nice and tight. On the pump. This little uh, backing plate goes on the back of the spring here. Make sure and change this o-ring that's underneath here. The other thing is uh, I never replace these rubber pieces on this uh, lever that goes in the pump. And you're also supposed to shave this down a little bit where it rides in the pump area there. They say it can bind. I've never had one bind, but uh, I do 
shave it down just a little bit. You can take a buffing wheel and just buff it a little bit just to give it a little bit of extra clearance. But I reuse these rubbers unless I just absolutely can't do it. Uh, oh. On your parking call. Oh, one other thing on your pumps. Look on the pump gear here. It's recessed. That rides right here. Faces this way. So make damn sure this is lined up before you go start tightening your pump up because it'll crack it right off. Make sure it's sitting down all the way flush before you go tightening your bolts up. On your parking call or park mechanism. This, uh, this little piece here goes inside the spring. And what'll happen sometimes when you go and you put tension on this, it'll get caught right on the edge there. And it won't be all the way down. And if it does that when you tighten this tail housing up, it's not gonna allow your uh, this lever to to move it'll get jammed actually it'll get jammed back so that it can't go forward and engage park so actually i've got this on the upside down wrong goes this way so anyhow fits in there just like that around there this goes around right there to make Make sure that that's all the way down and that you can move that spring up, especially in the back back here. You don't want it pinched underneath there. Alright, this is how I put my box together. For me, it seems to be the easiest. on here to help keep this up in there. Put the backing plate on the spring. Put the spring on there. And I put this down in there first. Take one of the pins. Pry on the slide right there until you get the pin in. I'm going to take this and I slide it in. When I pry forward. supposed to happen. Always when you're on camera everything goes wrong. Guaranteed. Make sure the color again goes out. Make sure it uh, moves nice and free right there. No bind ups. Make 
make sure that the recessed area faces up. Make sure your veins face in the same way that they were. There'll be two marks on here where the rings were riding. guide ring. Make sure it's somewhat centered up. These passages line up. Try to be easy when you go in so you don't push your rotor off to the side. And make sure it's all the way down, all the way around. See down in there, this little anti-rattle clip on the lower reverse clutches. It was right down here. It was in this way. Just right on top of that last steel. And then your pressure plate goes down. Alright, for starters. <coughs> Here's your air checks on your front and rear clutch, or I mean your reverse and high. Um, second and fourth, uh, low reverse, overruns, forwards. downs in the order that they come off. I keep my filter bolts separated. They're slightly different length. Nine check balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if your valve body has normal gaskets, throw them away. This one here has a bonded gasket, so this is fine. There's a filter there, filter there, spring, and a orifice cut plug.
remember where these were on there because some of them are in different places, not all in the same spot. Different tube configurations. You don't have to take the tubes out to get the valve body off. Real early models had a check ball here. Those are lined up. Everything else is lined up. those lined up you can go ahead and tighten them down. Line these brackets up with the holes and then you can tighten those down. bracket here. This goes underneath it. So this is uh, longer than these it goes here. The short ones go in the center.
song is fairly common about going bad. There's uh, these little spacers going each side. So you that one's missing. Make sure they're on there. Make sure your ground wire goes on. stop down here for these hit against. Shift that around. Flip it on. These little things that hold these wires break off like there's one that goes right here. It's right here. It ain't that big of a deal. Also, there's uh, little pieces that go on here to lock these solenoids into place. Uh, Mazda sells the new connector ends if you want to put them on there but uh, I've never had one come unplugged so I don't worry about it. Yeah, short and long. Shorts go in the center. And out on the edges. Long ones go up here. And down here. These are the only ones you gotta remove to get the valve body off. The bracket goes here. <clears throat> this bracket goes here. right here but that holds the temp sensor down so we'll do it in a minute fit in there pretty snug. Like I said, I've never had one come back out. This temp sensor number two. See how it's got this little tab right here and a little tab right here. I'm going to slide that up. Start that underneath. Slide that so it hooks into this plate. And just uh, 
slide it till it locks in place back there. They eliminated this probably because it didn't never work with the crap. This is your other temp sensor. <coughs> temp sensor number one. Lockup solenoid. It's got a bracket that fits on here also. Wrong spot. Wrong direction. So there's different heights, different spots where it fits down in there, different neck heights. show you something. Alright, one thing I see done wrong a lot on this unit. Uh, number one, there's uh, there's the brackets on the 4x4. And if uh, neutral switch here, I see people break these a lot. This little pin, I hope you can see it, goes right down here in this case. Put your linkage all the way forward. And loop that in the back back there and you make sure it pins in the case then you put your bolts in and there's a there's a hole right here in the neutral switch and there's a hole right here it's a hundred fifty two thousandths drill bit Put that in there. Put that in the neutral switch. And then you're perfectly lined up. And when you tighten it down, make sure that you can you got this to where it moves in and out freely. And then tighten it all down. This wires here go on the back side here. And this bracket goes over the front of it. That holds it down. I'm going to tighten this up. You get three eighths. And I hold this neutral switch down, and then you got the 110 right here. for this tranny on it so make sure it goes back on the tranny. <coughs> and there's one other thing I want to show you. Now's the time to do it. <coughs> Look right here where this uh, conduit has been chafed away. That's a good sign to go in here and look at these wires. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to put new conduit on here so that it doesn't rub up against something and rub into the wires. If you ever see that, check your wires out. 
right, before I totally forget about it, if you got knock sensor codes on these Nissans, it can keep it from getting fourth gear. So there's, I believe, two of them underneath the intake manifold. You're going to take the time to go through and replace one, replace them both. All right, for my band adjustments, I like to make the band to where it just wiggle around about that much. And that's different amounts for different trannies. Book says that this band adjustment should be two and a half turns. First tranny was two and a half turns. This tranny, first time I tightened it up, was uh, inch and uh, one and three quarter turns. And then I air checked it and it was too loose. Re tightened it down. This final adjustment's two turns. So it varies. Okay, this is a. 2002 Frontier. That first tranny was a 2003 Xterra. You see the filter difference here on the neck, and uh, don't have the number two uh, temp sensor. All right, speed sensors moved for two-wheel drive from the top to the side. Make sure. You got the right rear seal before you go popping this out. This is uh, the different bracket configuration for the this one. And I forgot to mention it before, but some of these have a sensor that go up, goes up here and goes all the way through the pump. So be sure and pull this out before you go pulling that pump out, or you will break it. And this is the gasket that goes for it.